can't see me. Sit down, Missy, they can't hear me. Now then, lad, get ready now. I used to be a reckless man about the way I dress, but that's the sort of game that doesn't pay. Appearances is everything, and clothes will always tell. That's if you wear them in the proper way. So when the Duke of Marlborough said to me the other day, it's a pity that a smart young man like you don't study your appearances. Why don't you dress like me? I said I will, and now I'm pleased I do. And it must be the clothes that I'm wearing That sets all the pretty girls staring It must be my smile, my best Sunday tile That makes all the other swells copy my style So if you want to be smart and stylish And shine in society Take the address of me then you'll be a swell like me. Ah, oh, I'm a swell, all right. I have been called other names, but of course, that doesn't matter. Young lads like us, we don't care. Do you know, I've seen me dash across the road when a tram's been coming and I've never fell. And when I've got it to the side, Everybody's noticed me, cause it must be the clothes that I'm wearing. That's it, keep it up now, see? Because I don't like to sing second time. It's hard work. Beautiful music, isn't it? Do you know, it sends me to sleep, that music. I'll just sit down here now, just while you finish, you know. I'll get you up last note now. Don't be a dress of metal, and you'll be a swell like me. I'm glad I've got through that. I'd forgot it, but I didn't want you to know. Good night. This baby, that's for all of you. about my grandfather and them that doesn't want to listen get out at room please because it's only annoyance to me now then lad my grandfather's clock was a waterbury watch it could live 90 days without food with a silk hat on its head and my father's Macintosh, it was dressed up like a Piccadilly dude. It was kept in the hall till the cupboard got too small, and we had no place the food for the stock. So the butter and the eggs and the little mutton legs, we kept them in my grand. Father's clock and the work of the clock through the butter melting in it sent the fingers flying round at a hundred miles a minute and Grandad with a sigh said I haven't time to die so I'll put it off until the clock's repaired. Ah, it was about the best thing as he could do, you know. Very sensible man was my grandfather. He always undressed himself before he got into bed. My grandfather's clock was my mother's perambulator. Round the park in it we used to ride. There was me and Fleetle Tommy, Liza and, and Justice Hawkins. 
screaming Jenny and the twins all stuck inside. So Grandad, who was dead, changed his mind, got up instead. And the sight that he saw gave him a shock. For the man who brought the coal couldn't get it down the hole. So he slung it in my grandfather's clock. And we didn't need a shovel as the pendulum swung higher. For every time it swung, it knocked some coal into the fire. And at nine o'clock, the crank used to chime a double blank. So Grandad had to knock, he couldn't go. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>